maganda po mga po sa inyong lahat. To our President, President Aguilan, and to the officers of your association, uh, a pleasant good morning. I must admit, I accepted this invitation with the hope that I will be recruiting some of you <laughs> with the in one of my projects in the newborn screening. So, I'm a pediatrician, I'm a geneticist, but because of the newborn screening program, we deal with a lot of chemistries. I really look forward to getting your society more engaged on a national level. But uh, I hope that you know we can work together. The goal in the world now is to be able to screen all the babies in the world. So I'm part of an organization, the International Society for Neonatal Screening. We are doing it country by country, actually. And now we're left with a lot in Africa. So I go around the world, actually, talking about how to set up newborn screening in your country. Let's go to the Philippines. Let's take a look at these pictures first. All of these babies had, uh, had newborn screening now. Can you, are they normal? Of course, since I showed it, somebody must be abnormal. Can you pick up? Will you be able to find it? The answer is no. Because they all look normal at birth. Because the goal is to have newborn screening done at birth. Because the symptoms manifest after birth. I will not go into many conditions, but let me tell you, I have two patients in this group. So, how did it start in the Philippines? It was really a very sad simple research and here my mentor my department chair said ko na lang pumunta i did not know they would eat me alive as i was defending this proposal and right in front of me they were going to disapprove it until finally they agreed in giving me 500,000 pesos no i was so happy with that and the university gave me a million and that was the beginning of our story so 24 hospitals got together, so we wrote actually 75 hospitals and asked if they would come to a meeting just like this. And then I talked about newborn screening. I was the youngest at that time, no? We set up a study group to come up with the data, and then we actually wanted to give it the, to the government. The problem was that when we were ready with the data, the government was not ready, which is very, very difficult, no? But we are not ready to accept your project. In the meantime, we could not stop the project anymore. So by 1999, we were 69 hospitals. By 2000, we were 300. I was just an ordinary faculty member of UP College of Medicine, and we got stuck with this. 24 hospitals were just putting it together. So one part of the story is that um, for one year, we sent it to Australia. Then after that, we had to set up our lab. So the lab actually was at UP Manila at NIH. And that is the reason why I decided to, to write the law. We had to get our data. So when we hit 153 hospitals, we had enough to show. We had the data for this, and we already recommended for nationwide screening. But the, the problem was that the government was not ready. That I really commend all the hospitals who pursue this without a policy. We made a calculation, the cost-benefit analysis showed that if I screen all the children in the country, Every year, I can save the government 600 million because all the patients I will save can be normal individuals and will eventually be taxpayers of the country. You've got to publish your work because when it's published, it becomes peer-reviewed, it's more acceptable. And if you're talking about something that will entail money, then you have to make sure that you've got the cost-benefit analysis because government will, will look at that. 2000, I decided to go back to school because I couldn't afford the lobbyists. I had no money, but uh, education in UP was free. So I decided to enroll at the College of Public Health on Health Policy to learn how to come up with a policy. Unfortunately, it was not my thesis because even my thesis advisor did not believe that I could get it passed that soon in time for me to graduate. When I wrote this law, it was meant to answer the problems. No? I had so many implementation problems. Uh, this is one of the fastest laws that was passed. As uh, At that time, it was passed in less than a year. I remember giving this to Senator Flavier in April. They finally filed it in May. I think my first hearing was about August. It got passed actually in less than a year. So, milagro na naman yun. I cannot take credit for that. There was something miraculous and divine providence that made that happen. But anyway, it got passed. But let me tell you the components. We made it sure that it was um, comprehensive. Minsan lang to eh, di ba? 
integrated into the public health system. It must be sustainable and it must be collaborative. We were very careful with the words. For one thing, we wanted to make sure that government was going to adapt it. We had a big debate on whether it's going to be mandatory. In the U.S., it says mandatory. I had a big debate with the lawyers at that time. If you look at the law, it says opportunity for every baby to be born to undergo newborn screening. These are the highlights. Napaka simple ng patas. Number one, who is responsible? The one taking care of the baby when the baby is born is the obligation of the health workers. Number two, it is part of licensure. So no hospital or birthing facility can actually be given a license without offering newborn screening. That's why I have 7,200 hospitals right now. It is a requirement. It is a requirement for accreditation at PhilHealth. Who is the lead? Definitely not UP. It is the Department of Health. The other thing here is Section 30, which I want to share with you is that when I lobbied for this at the Senate, uh, the Senate told me, the Secretary, Uy, ang ganda naman ng idea, tas wala kang opisina sa UP. And they said, if you just leave it uh, like that without an office that will be partnering with government, then with a the change of administration, it can easily slip away. And that is the reason why you have the newborn screening reference center. When I went to the lower house, they said exactly said the same thing. So finally we said, okay, in the law, we will have the Newborn Screening Reference Center that's going to be the partner of uh, the Department of Health in the implementation of the program. And of course, the most important of all, it was part of field health. Uh, we have the newborn care package that was, that was born in uh, 2006. And the newborn care package includes the cost of newborn screening. So, hindi na problema ng pasyente, ng pamilya ang newborn screening, basta ikaw ay field health member. In terms of governance, it's really the Department of Health. UP is only a technical partner, and the funding, agents really, the funding agency is really field health. So, that's where we are now. But, you know, think of that. It was a simple idea. It was an idea of... Uh, a pushed forward by 24 hospitals. And that's why I always give credit 24 hospitals because I don't think we will go this far if the 24 hospitals did not pursue at that time. From our regional 24 uh, coordinators, only one has passed away. The rest are retired and still attending our convention. Okay? So I think, you know, when uh, your society moves forward, and, Ideas can be just for your society, but you can come up with ideas that will actually benefit the whole country. To be honest, when I was when I set it up, I had no idea it will go this far. Never in my life. I was a, I just wanted a simple life. I was a faculty member, but I got stuck with this, and we just had to move on. So now, as a society, I think you just have to think that you know how can you make a contribution because you can see here that this started really with chemistry. Yeah, you know, new technologies have come in. So now we have six labs. So one of the things that we do is set up the labs. You know, I had a lot of problems before, but implementation-wise, I we divided together with the Department of Health. We decided to cut down the cost. We will have regional labs. So you actually have a lab here in Batangas, so in Antinamisha. NCR, Region 5 and 4, because to Manila. Um, the one at Mariano Marcos. We have one in Cebu opening anytime now. You already went to accreditation. And then I have a new lab that will come in in Cagayan de Oro. Of course, I'm no longer the director of this office, but of course, it, it's already my advocacy, so I'm really quite stuck with it for life. But the point is, you've got to plan. Um, you have to plan something that's attainable. You don't have to do it all the same time. If you notice, there are numbers because the beginning, we only had one in Manila, then I opened the one in Visayas to cover the whole of Visayas, then Mindanao, the whole of Mindanao. Then since Luzon was so big, we started opening up. Okay, so new small ideas can really grow big. 